driving on the R43 between the western Cape towns of Hermanus and Filirdo, one may notice this sign. Caution, horses. Nothing unusual about that. However, the horses that this sign refers to are not your run-of-the-mill horses. They're wild in the way that they have not had a lot of human contact, although they are humans that walk around. They live on their own, they fend on their own, they, they should be finding water and grazing in, the, in their own capacity and not uh, from the human themselves. Well, there's two particular guides that people have used over the years for the, the wild horses. The one is that they were originally farm horses and they were used for the farmland and everything until the combine harvesters and everything took over from the horses and they were abandoned as such. The other story that um, I've heard as well is that in the Boer War, the soldiers were up in this area. Apparently this was quite a strong valley for the Boer War and fight and they used the horses to pull the carriages and the, the guns. But then they were called back to Cape Town and apparently they had an over excess of horses by the time they went back and they left some behind. They do show a lot of uh, wild traits in there. There's um, a hierarchy in, in the herd like there would be in any wild animal pack. They've definitely adapted to the environment, especially um, on their feet. Most of the area they, they roam in is wetland and we've found that their feet have actually spread open and become a lot um, bigger than a normal horse's uh, hoof or that the hoof should be on, on that size horse. Most of the herd of wild horses lives in the Roysand Nature Reserve and finding the herd is best done on horseback. The magnificent scenery makes for storybook images of these finely honed animals. The horses, numbering around 30 in total, have a range that stretches from Roysant down to the small town of Clainmont. As long as their numbers stay low, they have no discernible impact on the vegetation or the natural environment. A few years ago, the herd split into two as a result of a change in the Botrefir's lagoon structure. So a small break of herd now lives in the village of Fisherhaven. These horses are kicking up a bit of a stink. And I'm sure over at Roysand, uh, the horses and therefore the manure, everything is managed. And it's mainly at the beach or yeah. in the countryside. Yeah. Ten horses, it's ten horses too much on the streets. That's just full stop. They often go through gardens, especially if they're not fenced. And if they fight amongst each other, you better get out of the way. Because they gallop on the street and you hear it on the tar very hard. And then through the garden, through the bushes, straight. The horses in Fisherhaven have become a permanent fixture and most residents welcome the small herd into their village. They're definitely an attraction. It's something we talk to our friends about and boast about and it's ex extremely unique. I love them here. Yeah. They've been through my property two or three times um, and they've never left anything but footprints and, and excrement and they are magnificent. I follow them with a bucket and spade and put it on my compost heap. Extremely good for my vegetables and, and my herbs. They're hugely attractive. Um, they, they're important in that respect. It's, I think it, it almost puts fish over on the map. Uh, people like to see them. They're inquisitive about where they've come from and how they've survived so long where they are. And no, I think it's, uh, in that respect, it's positive. There are some people in the village who are very, very protective of these horses and don't want them to be harmed or taken away other than through their own um, desires. Resident Tracy Whitelaw is an avid horse lover and knows the herd well. There's a network. We use WhatsApp, we use Facebook, just to keep an eye on them and make sure that they don't uh, come to harm. If they go too close to the R43, we're there to sort of shoo them back down again. Um, we try and educate people not to feed them and to spray them with insecticide to kill ticks. We try and encourage people not to chase them, throw stones at them, and just basically to let them, let them be. Here we have the main group hiding around the corner here. A mare, stallion, I think, that's, I think that's another stallion. And then over here, you can just see through here, this is the mare who happens to be the mother of that young filly and is also the mother of the current cult. 
As far as people are aware, up until now, the horses have not attacked anyone and are unlikely to do so. But danger lies in the horses' intragroup exchanges, and humans, especially children, may inadvertently get in the way of a lethal blow directed at another horse. Although they're used to seeing humans, me, myself, as, as a horse lady, I would not go and stand in the middle of a wild herd. A lot of people say it's very nice to have a horse in the backyard and the horse is walking around and they try and touch them and whatever, but they've got to understand that they are wild horses. And the unfortunate thing as well is that some, some people feed them. So it, it gives the horses a, a security that there's always going to be food there and they stay in the area. This is a yearling filly. She's quite tame and she's going to come up to me and ask for treats. No, no, no. Because people have been feeding her. If it was um, in the breeding season, um, the, the stallions could be dangerous. If you got close to them, I think they would um, probably attack you. They can be dangerous because it's a, it's a big animal, a horse weighs a lot and um, I, I would imagine if, ch if children got too close to them or excited them or they were, it happened to be in the mating season, the stallions become quite ferocious. So there's always that potential danger when you have a big mammal like that wandering around that something could happen. My personal concerns about the horses is the human factor. I, I would hate them to become a nuisance to people. I would hate them to become like baboons and have to be handled or managed actively. I think that they are a joy to have when they are comfortable and, and at peace. But yes, they walk through people's garden and people, people get annoyed about that. Although the horses are mostly welcome in Fisher Haven, something does need to be done about their future. A decision needs to be made by local authorities in the area as to how to address residents' concern about the horses in the street. But under whose jurisdiction do the horses fall? At a Bot River Estuary Forum meeting, and the question was asked there, who's responsible for horses and what should we do about them? There, was, there was an, wasn't a very positive response, and the powers that be, neither Cape Nature or the Overstead Municipality, were prepared to to, to uh, take responsibility for them. When they're on the Roysant side, they apparently under the jurisdiction of uh, Cape Nature. Um, when they're walking around the streets of Fisherhaven, then they become, I assume, under the jurisdiction of the Overstrand municipality. It is a bit of a grey area. Currently there is no um, legal ownership of these horses, so we, we need to find out what the legal ownership of these horses are. Overstrand Municipality's environmental manager, Liesel Besedenhout, has been given the task of finding an all-encompassing solution. The municipality stepped in to ensure that viable options are found to secure the welfare and safety of the horses and to make decisions that are, have their best interest at heart. Because the municipality is very clear on what animals should be roaming the streets of residential areas, the horses in Fisherhaven should not be here. But they are here and therefore the municipality and the task team will have to find all the possible solutions and all the different options to look at how we're going to ensure the safety um, and, and welfare of these animals by making the right decisions. Personally, in a perfect world, I'd like to see these horses back in the Roysant Reserve. I think, I think that they, they come over here for a variety of reasons. Um, at the moment, the mouth is open, so they can't go back, even if we were able to drive them down there. And they're certainly not going to swim across an open um, river with a foal. Um, I fear for them because of the human factor. The horses shouldn't be fed or treated like tame domestic horses if they are to be kept from becoming pests. The herd residing in Droysant demonstrates that their attractiveness lies in the very fact that they are free roaming, wild creatures to be observed and admired from an appropriate distance and left to their freedom.